You did it. This is the end. Would you talk? Recap. No more. Me. Good for you. Okay? But let's still recap the last module. So this module is interesting because I pick up stuff from different modules and put it together. Okay? And I want to let you know that in some books, if you see that this module is associated with module 9, but then, in my opinion, it becomes too heavy. Name anyways, let's focus. All right. So I picked up from module 9. And in module 9, what I did was I drive in the consideration of momentum and differential form, right? And then what I did is I assumed the implicit flow, and I come up with Euler's or Euler's equation. And I said that, hey, you have three Euler's equations, one consideration of mass, I have four unknowns, U, V, W, and P, you're good, okay? So in this module, what I do is a bit different. Instead of looking at implicit, I pick up some information from module 11, which is the viscous flow, and now I treat the flow as the viscous and see what happens in these kind of Euler's equations. Actually, what I get at the end of the day, you need to watch the lecture videos to know the details, but basically, I tag along at last term to the Euler's equation. And when I do the viscous flow, assumption, you do see that I come up with the Navier-Stokes equations. And I discuss this in the Cartesian coordinates, I discuss this in the polar coordinates because the typical geometry in fluid mechanics is a pipe, which is a circular cross-section, right? And also note, note something in the equation, Navier-Stokes equation, I just write the x direction for reference because they are long. Um, look at the last term, the last term as a viscosity times the parentheses, right, the second, different, second order differentials. Um, if I take this viscosity is equal to zero, that term will vanish. And if you look at the rest of the terms, what is that? This is the Euler's equation, okay? I don't have to cover chapter nine of those Euler's equations. I can cover with this and just put the viscosity is equal to zero, right? Something to know. And then what I did was now I need to come up with some boundary conditions. And I look at my boundary conditions at the so surface, a free surface, and I look at the solid surface. At a solid surface, what will happen? The first thing is we discussed this all the way from module one. We said that no slip condition, okay? If that condition is applied, then I'm gonna have my tangential component of the velocity will be equal to zero, or if, if there's a slip, that will be whatever the slip of slip velocity is. What about the perpendicular? If this is like a wall, well, there will be no, you know, penetration into the wall from the fluid side, right? But this can be a membrane as an example, then yes, there will be penetration, so I have to use that as a boundary condition. And then what I did look at is a free surface. What happens at the free surface? Interface between a, a liquid and a gas. And I said that um, the shear stresses will be zero at that free surface. And obviously the velocities will be continuous at that interface as well. And then what I did in this module is I started applying these Navier-Stokes equations and continuity or conservation of mass from this module nine into some geometries. The first one that I picked is fairly standard and uh, easy mathematics-wise. So basically I have two parallel plates, they are stationary, right? And I have pressure gradient that is pushing the flow in between the parallel plates. And we look at what happens to them. And we come up with, we started with the continuity equation, then did the conservation of momentum, which is the Navier-Stokes equation, the direction of the flow. And then we come up with that, as I put it up there, uh, the velocity distribution within the parallel plates is established. I talked about the maximum velocity. I talked about why the maximum velocity is almost like a negative, but it is not, right? We discussed that. I looked at the volumetric flow rate. I looked at the mean velocity between two parallel plates. And the name of this particular flow is typically Poisson flow is the name given. And then what I did was I switched gears a little bit actually. I said that hey, this top plate is moving, okay? Because now if you think about the no slip condition, if the top plate is moving, the first fluid particle clinging to it will move at the same velocity, right? So there will be some motion generated in my fluid. But with that, now I have an option. I can have, I can still have the pressure gradient pushing the flow or not. If I don't have the pressure gradient, that's called the quiet flow. Okay? And I showed you the equation up there. Um, but also, things get a little bit more complicated if I have pressure gradient. But the good thing was I was able to superimpose the solutions and add them up to come up with. Because in one case, I can say the pressure gradient is zero when there's a motion. In the other case, the motion is zero, but there's a pressure gradient, and I sum them up. 
and I come up this with a P kind of value, and I plot the different cases for you, and I show you that shear stress can be zero in some cases. In some cases, again, it can be backflow because the motion of the top fluid can be this way, pressure gradient that way. So we analyze different realistic velocity profiles for you. I also did another kind of example. I have an inclined plate, fairly typical, and I did this type of approach in module one as well. You may want to watch that. Um, and I put a block on it, I slide down in module one. In, in this module, what I'm doing is um, I have a actually a fluid film that is sliding on top of a inclined plate, and this is gravity driven obviously, and analyzed it. And I come up with the velocity distribution there, I come up with the mean velocity, etc. The important thing to look at over here was the boundary condition at that free surface. You may want to take a close look at it to understand how that is done. Then I look at the hagen poiseuille flow. So now, okay, parallel plates are all are nice. They're easy to do. But in real life, the application space may be limited because if I look at the general shape, which is a pipe, I need to look at the polar coordinates, right? So I started looking at that. I have a radius, I have a pipe, I have a pump attached to it, I have a pressure gradient, what happens? So I analyze this for you. I come up with the velocity distribution up there. I come up with the maximum velocity, the mean velocity, volumetric flow rate, and those are very important topics that you need to know as engineers. Okay? Um, and at towards the end of this module, so also I gave some numerical more examples for you to um, grasp the concepts. And this is it. Okay? This is the end of the module 12. And thank you again for taking this educational journey. With me, I hope that these modules that we established, these everything that is available to you, was helpful.